Welcome to another Kids Online. It's great that you are joining in again. So for today's video, I thought we could start off with a challenge. I wonder if you can do this challenge faster than me. So all you need for this challenge is some plastic cups. Maybe you have some plastic cups like I do, or you have some different ones. You need about 10. If you don't have plastic cups, you can maybe use building blocks, Jenga, Duplo, whatever you have. So for this challenge, you need to build a pyramid out of this, but it's a race to see how fast you can do it. So I've got my iPad here to time me, and then I will show you my time at the end. I wonder how quickly you can do this challenge. Maybe you could challenge the people in your house to see if you could beat me or you could beat those around you. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> That took me 13.99 seconds. I wonder how quickly you can do it. But the best thing about building this tower is then you can knock it <laughs> That challenge got me thinking about a story. The story doesn't include a tower, but it does include a very big boat. Can you guess what story we're gonna look at today? We're gonna look at the story of Noah. So I have permission from the Harper Christian um, Collins Foundation to read this story. So why don't you get comfy and the pictures will appear on the screen. This story is called A New Beginning. Time passed and many people filled the earth. Everyone everywhere had forgotten about God and were only doing bad things all the time. God's heart was filled with pain. When he saw what had happened to the world he loved, everywhere was disease, death and destruction, all the things God hated most. Now, Noah was God's friend, which was very odd in those days because no one else was. Noah listened to God, he talked to God, he just loved being with God, like you do with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong, people have filled my world with hate instead of love. They're destroying themselves and each other and my world. I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark? Neither do I. Neither did Noah. Luckily, God knew how and he would show him. A storm is coming, God told Noah, but I will rescue you, I promise. I'll send the animals to you, ones that creep, crawl, slither, slime, gallop and hop and bound and climb. And don't forget to pack everyone food. The storm was going to wash away all the hate and the sadness and everything that had gone wrong and make the world clean again. But Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark, a very, very large boat. Noah's neighbors came to watch and pointed and laughed because they didn't believe Noah about the boat or the storm all needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly. His boat was in the desert. The desert was nowhere near the sea. There wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anyone need an umbrella, let alone a boat? But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought. So he just did what God told him to do. When the ark was ready, God said, all aboard. Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door and it started to rain for minutes that joined up into hours, that joined up into days, that joined it up into weeks and weeks. And the rain joined into puddles and joined up into rivers and joined up into lakes and joined up into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat had seemed so big, suddenly seemed so very small, but in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves, in all the thunder and lightning, through it all, God was with them. And God kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped. The sun came out. Noah threw open the windows. Hooray, everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore. It wasn't long before she brought back a fresh olive leaf. Everyone knew exactly what she 
what that meant. She'd found a tree and the land, the water was going down. At last, the boat landed suddenly on the top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, out you come. So they did. Everyone was skipping and dancing into dry land. The first thing Noah did was thank God for rescuing them, just as he had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, God said, see, I have sung, hung up bows in the clouds. And there in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a futile rainbow made of light. It was the beginning in God's world. It wasn't long before everything, everything went wrong again, but God wasn't surprised. He knew this would happen. That's why before the beginning of time, he had another plan, a better plan, a plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it. A plan one day to send his own son, the rescuer. God's strong anger against hate and sadness and death would come down once more, but not on his people or his world. No, God's war bow was not pointing at his people, it's pointing up into the heart of heaven. What a great story. That got me thinking all about promises. In that story, God made a promise to Noah. I wonder how many promises have you made this week? Maybe you've said, I promise to tidy my room, or I promise not to hit my sibling anymore. But the thing about the promises sometimes we make is we can quite easily break them. We can forget about tidying our room, and we can forget about agreeing not to hit our siblings anymore because they're really annoying us. But the thing about God's promises, he never breaks them. Just like in that story to Noah, God promised Noah that he would rescue him, and he did. And he sent him a promise too, a rainbow in the sky. He promised never to destroy the world again. The thing about God's promises is they are great because they are never broken. So I thought to help remember the story, we could make a craft. All you need for this craft is paper plates, so one whole paper plate and two half paper plates, some glue, scissors, colouring pencils or pens, maybe some animal stickers if you have them, if not you could draw them, some cotton wool for some clouds. You might need some grown ups help with one of the cutting parts. I would love to see all of your Noah creation crafts. So why don't you send some photos, either to my email address or to the kids Instagram, which will appear on the screen now. That story got me thinking all about thankfulness. As when we looked at the story, it said, the first thing Noah did was thank God for rescuing him. It got me thinking, what are you thankful for today? or this week. Maybe you could just spend a moment thanking God for something. It could be something big or something small. Do you know, when I have a bad day and I feel like everything is going wrong, I always try and remind myself to be thankful and thank God for maybe that's a really small thing or a big thing, to remind myself 
that good things have happened that day and I can still be thankful. It changes how I'm feeling. So maybe you could spend a couple of moments thanking God for something. You could even write this down, say it out loud, or just say it in your heart. Do you know, it also got me thinking all about promises, which I mentioned earlier. I have this picture of a rainbow. And the thing about God's promises, he never breaks them. And in that story, we are reminded that God never left Noah and he never leaves you. So I just want you to remember that this week. I don't know how your week's gone. I don't know how your day is going, but God is with you through it all. So I'm going to pray and sometimes it might help you concentrate whether you, if you close your eyes and put your hands together. I'm not going to put my hands together because I'm going to hold on to this rainbow. I'm going to close my eyes to help me concentrate. So, dear God, thank you that you love us and thank you that you never break your promises to us. Thank you that you never leave us. Help us to be thankful this week and remember all the good things that you have done for us. Amen.